It might be hard to believe, but a few days ago, this desk was fairly clear. I can't claim that it was entirely clear, but it was fairly clear. But then I started this project. Dun dun dun. Software defined radio. Um, I am guilty of thinking that it would be fairly easy. Ended up not being very easy, and I'm still struggling with it a bit. Partly due to this homemade circuit board that I made during the daytime with light leaking through the window, which messed up the exposure. I've been fighting a lot of broken traces on the board. But I have it working a little bit now. It's not working completely. I'm not getting the I and Q 90, to fa 90 degree phase uh, signals out of it correctly. But let me show you what I've got so far. I have RF coming in through this coax from a dipole that I put up in my backyard across the side of the house, across my driveway. It's a very big dipole I made out of just a bunch of junk wire I had around. It's feeding into here. There's a biasing circuit which is biasing the antenna which is capacitively coupled um, to the circuit. There used to be a bandpass filter in here which I removed because I was suspect that that was the the problem which I don't think it was actually. It was just broken traces. I have a local oscillator right here which eventually will be fed from a little FPGA and through this connector. Then I have a flip-flop circuit which is making a counter and then having a 90 degree phase um, clock coming out of it which feeds this FET switch MUX which is directly sampling different phases of the input uh, input RF and storing it into these caps along the side. So it's doing direct conversion. So there's a lot of contention online about what this is actually called, this detector. Some people say it's the, I believe, Talo detector by a guy in the late 80s that invented it. Um, I've seen filtering techniques from a book in the 70s which call this type of technique a commutating filter. I've seen other people arguing that it existed prior as a sampling detector. So who knows? Lots of drama out there. Someone invented this, but it's recent in the last, you know, couple decades, which is really cool because radio existed for whatever, a hundred years, kind of uh, with super het receivers. And now, recently, we have a new type of detector. So you sample all these different phases of the the RF signal, and it gets directly converted down to audio frequencies, and you end up with a 90 degree phase and an in 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 uh, in phase and out of out of phase um, signal I and then Q, the Q being the out of phase. And right now I'm running that into a PC sound card, so I can use existing software defined radio software to to get this working first. Over here, I have some circuitry that I'm prototyping up to try to do some of the detection in the analog world and then feed it out of a speaker so I can also tune it around um, on a, a local speaker. Ultimately, I want to take the I and the Q signals, feed it into an analog to digital converter, get it into an FPGA and start working with um, an FPGA to do all the digital, digital signal processing. So let me show you what I've got working. So here's a piece of software free from a ham radio operator, WinRAD 1.33. Again, ham radio operators pioneering all this really cool analog stuff. All right, you can see in this waterfall display, this is the spectrum. I have my local oscillator here set to five megahertz and we see some mirror imaging here. So I'm not getting image rejection because my I and Q signals are not out of phase or one's not existing. Probably a broken wire or something on the board. But I will get it. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on. I think you guys, any of you that have played around with shortwave radios have probably heard this before. Ah, the sweet sound of the atomic clocks, WWV, WWB. As a kid, I used to tune these in all the time and I would use this to tune my receivers. Um, 
I heard recently that they may discontinue this, and I don't know if this is true or not, but this would make me uh, kind of sad, because this is means so much to me. I don't know. I'm all nostalgic about it. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm sure I'll get my little bug fixed, and then I'll start playing around with in my comfort zone in the digital world with FPGAs. All right, thanks for watching my random blathering vlog and uh, looking at my messy desk. All right, talk to you guys later.